What's up mushroom fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today is a very exciting day here. Um, it's been five days since we did all of our spore inoculations onto auger and um, three and a half days for the, the redos that I did. Um, and I wanted to go over my plate reads at five days so we've got some germinating spores that I wanted to go through. Um, I also did um, some peroxide on those contaminated plates from the identifying bacteria video. So I'll go through that at the very end. Um, I'm, I'm building a separate video just for this because I think it's a really cool process. Um, it's not something that I do often or um, at all actually until now. So I wanted to walk through adding different uh, peroxide to try and save any plates that might be contaminated. But first things first, um, we'll break down the difference between the uh, tween 20 plates and the plates that were not tween 20. And then I'll show you the difference between um, a diluted spore sample compared to the 20 mil spore solutions that we were um, using for the video. If you haven't seen it yet, the immaculate inoculation video i'll post the link again but um, moving forward you should have watched that video which kind of goes through the process on how to get to this point when you're breeding mushrooms so it's five days in we've got some oyster mushrooms popping we've got some uh, foliodo namico and also some shiitake very early stage so i'll go through um, and start off with the shiitake which you can definitely see the difference on the tween plates. So um, this plate here, you can see one colony forming um, and then it's really hard to show on this dish, but there are probably a dozen or so tiny little colonies that have just started on the tween plate where this is the uh, PDA plate and there's no growth yet, but I have no doubt that if we got some colonies forming on this, maybe in a day or two, we'll start to see some shiitake. So that is very early. Um, I'll show the progression of this as the, the spores start to germinate, but then on the, the MEA plate, um, there's a couple colonies. Wish I could take the, the lid off and kind of show it a little closer, but um, I still see some, some spores that haven't really taken off yet on the MEA. And it looks like there's a colony here, possibly some bacteria, but that's okay. So shiitake um, on PDA with tween, we see some very early stage colonies forming. So now, I will go to the Namico or Foliota Namico, and it's kind of the same as the shiitake. Um, I don't see too much happening on this one. Yep, still empty for um, the Namico. But if we go to the golden oyster, this one is really taking off. So you can see all those different colonies of mycelium starting. And this was a 1 to 20 dilution of spores or one, a 20 mil spore solution. And you can see how densely, um, how densely clustered all of these different uh, spores that are germinating are and that is because there's probably millions and millions of spores so this one is going to be a little bit tricky to isolate different phenotypes um, I wanted to show you very early on what it would look like so see that white area right in the middle and that to me has already um, been spores that have done their connections um, it's probably diploid mycelium at this point. So essentially with this Petri dish, I'm just going to let these colonies grow out 
and then in about four or five days from now I'll come back and I'll start to sector off different phenotypes from this petri dish but this is five days in we've already got spores there's two different phenotypes of golden oyster um, this was one of my my lowest yielding strains last summer so I'm really excited to get this new golden oyster variety so I wanted to show you also the difference between a bacteria and mycelium so this is a bacterial colony here um, it must have snuck its way in there after I did those initial readings and then over here is where the mycelium is so it's separated enough where I can pick some cultures but what I like to do at this stage because um, the the mycelium is going to grow pretty rapidly so I'll take my marker and mark bacteria in this section so that in a few days from now when these colonies form and the mycelium will grow over it I can flip over and know not to take a section from that area all right, so now I wanted to go on to um, the brown oyster. And you can see this is the plate with tween. This is the plate without tween. Um, we've got another bacterial colony here, but look at the growth of that brown oyster. Already, we have a lot of mating going on, um, some really strong mycelium. I'm sorry for the condensation, but We've also got a nice clump over here. And once again, these are from the, the 10 or 20 milliliter spore solutions that we inoculated onto these dishes and then used a plate spreader to spread them out. So very concentrated. Um, this is a less technical way to breed mushrooms. And then we're going to random, randomly select different phenotypes here. So I'm gonna write bacteria, um, but yeah, these are five days in, brown oyster, very strong strain. Um, so then we've got our local Colorado oyster from the summer, still haven't seen any germination. Um, it's not too concerning, but I'm going to um, come back in about 12 or 15 hours and hopefully we get some germination on those plates. And then next Monday, I'm going to do my sectoring. So I poured about 100 petri dishes and I'm going to take different phenotypes, put them on those petri dishes to grow out, and then I'll do my, my breeding um, test runs on bulk substrate from all those different phenotypes. So if you think about this petri dish here with the brown oyster, all of those um, colonies that are kind of really clumped together could potentially be a different color a different volume of production, different flavors, um, different substrates, and that is what makes up a phenotype. So the physical capability of that mushroom, even though it came from the same predecessors, all of those colonies can yield different results. So they're going to overlap and compete over the next few days, and then I'm gonna get a nice white colony that I can um, take sections from the edge. So that will be my phenotype selection. Um, all right, so we've got the lion's mane next. Looks like we still are waiting on these ones, but it's good because then I know that there's no bacterial contamination. So I got clean plates five days in, so it's a pretty good indication that whatever pops, whenever these spores will pop, um, it will be pure lion's mane mycelium. So I'll just be patient with those ones. So now, I wanted to show you guys the difference between um, after I had all of these contaminated blue oyster plates, I took that spore solution, diluted it about two more, um, two more times, and that would equate to two significant figures or two standard deviations of dilution. So you can look at how many colonies of, of their of bacteria are on this plate probably about 20 to 100 colony forming units of bacteria and it's really interesting because um, so same thing with this because as I go to the diluted sample 
there is a plate that shows the same bacteria, but there's only one colony. So that means that on the rest of these plates, there's a pretty good chance that there's no bacteria. Um, and then you can see that that's the case. And it's really exciting because some of these back, um, colonies are mycelium. So right there, there is a perfect example of taking a contaminated um, spore stock solution, diluting it out, and obtaining clean mycelium colonies. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but those colonies right there are the spores that have been germinating after about three and a half days. Very exciting. Um, I'm super pumped for these strains. They seem to be growing really fast. So I'm just going to let those colonies kind of find their way on the Petri dish until about three or four days from now. And then once they start to form areas of segregation or um, overlapping areas, then I'll start to segment those onto their own Petri dishes and then run those through the trial. So another really good example of some mycelium here. And then you can notice the spread of all of those mycelium colonies as they germinated. And then compared to a bacterial colony, it's kind of amorphic. It still looks white, but if you look really closely, it's not as feathery, it's not as transparent, and you'll see very quickly that the mycelium will outgrow the bacteria after it establishes itself pretty rapidly. So lastly, I wanted to talk about um, those blue oyster plates that have been contaminated. Um, so after 72 hours, I did my plate reads and we found about four different plates filled with bacteria. So this is from my blue oyster spores. I'm letting these ones continue to germinate um, because someone had mentioned that they were able to save healthy mycelium out of a contaminated dish. So I'm gonna go through that process. Um, but right now, I wanted to point out another contaminant, which is really tough to mitigate when you're growing mushrooms and it's called trichoderma. So super early on, you can see um, these round colonies here that they look like mushroom mycelium. But if you look very closely, you'll be able to see a tiny little indent and that will be the, the start of sporulation. So I can't really get it to focus in, but this colony right here, there's a tiny little speck of darkness in the middle of that colony. So it's a pretty uniform circle with a tiny little speck. And to me, that's an indication of trichoderma. I'll let this grow out just to verify it. Um, but there also looks like a couple oyster mushroom mycelium that are separated from the bacteria. So I'm going to label these guys number one and number two in case a couple days from now those to start to take off and I'll be able to save those blue oyster colonies even though they were surrounded by a bacteria. That is going to be challenging, but I'll try and work through that just to show you guys. I've got some clean ones over here. So um, as a backup, I'm pretty confident that we'll get some of the results out of those and this will be more challenging. So then this is um, those same uh, PDA plates that were contaminated after a couple days of soaking in peroxide. So the idea is that the peroxide will destroy the bacteria but allow for mycelium growth. So this is um, the blue oyster plate with peroxide on MEA and you can see some of the bacteria survived that initial peroxide wash but it does look like we're seeing some other growth towards the middle of the plate. So I'll label these colonies as well um, just in case we get 
some more blue oyster growth that we can save from potentially um, contaminated plates. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. I know it was a long one, but I always get um, questions about how to tell the difference between mycelium when it's germinating on spores, and I hope this clarified a lot of questions. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet, and stay tuned. Um, we'll be releasing more strains in the spring. I did just restock our Etsy with some really nice liquid cultures, and I also have some petri dish cultures because some people are concerned about shipping um, during the winter. So check out our Etsy Fresh Fungi. I'll post the link below. And until next time, much love.